Now the thing is, the other thing is, um, all of the contract-based PvP in, uh, in Dust right now is by consent. Um, you can, a Dust your corporation can set up these attack contracts. Like they they take one of these contracts here. That's an attack contract. So basically, they're taking a contract from the State Protectorate or the um, 24th Imperial Crusade, etc., to attack these districts. Once they do that, it then pops up for us, for the other dust directors, as a defense contract. So basically, somebody took a federal defense union contract, and then it generated this contract as a defense contract. So someone took an attack contract from the federal defense union, and then it pops up to all the other dusters as a defense contract. If nobody takes this, then nothing happens. It just kind of disappears, and, you know, it's game over. For that attack, kind of problematic, because um, essentially you can stonewall an attack and dust decides by having nobody fight. And, and I don't know, my opinion is, if you have a system where you know you can basically win by not fighting, it's just kind of, I don't know, there's it's problematic to say the least. Sound mic too low, sound effects too high. RK, one sec, guys. should be able to turn the volume up now and see if that's there we go how about that that should be better all right all right so let's we'll go back to trying to roll to get Escokio. now while I'm doing this you guys got any uh, specific questions um, either in the stream or let me see if I can pull up the uh, o Dust OB channel as well. Okay, there we go. I still know it's Tokyo. The skills, it's it's um all it's active. Um, the way it is is you earn up enough of a pool of active SP. Um, let's see, it's Tokyo. It's still not there. Um, you earn up a pool of enough active SP, and then you just go and apply all your points. Um, think of it like when the uh, the learning skill got nixed, and you ended up with a pool of um, uh, SP. Um, you could go through and reapply that SP to your character sheet. The way that works is very similar to how um. Um, the skilling system in, in uh, Dust works. You essentially you pool your SP, and then you apply it to a skill, and you have the same kind of multipliers, you know, 1x, 2x, up to 12x, all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, and by the way, if for the Eve guys watching this, these when I tell when I say there's a potential contract up, this is what I mean. These are defense contracts that are available that have not been accepted yet. So, you know, someone might take this, they may not take it. That's why I always list it as a potential. Because, you know, it, and what I generally do is if I'm, uh, if I'm sitting here uh, posting contracts, I'll refresh it. And if it disappears, let's say I'll post it as a potential. If it disappears off the contract list, and it's a good, a good bit before the time the battle's supposed to happen, it's safe to assume that someone's taken it. And then that's when I move it into a... Um, confirmed orbital bombardment. That way you guys can go run out there and hopefully uh, shoot some stuff. Oh, man. Alright. I think uh, Iskokio knows that I'm trying to refresh a contract for it because this is taking even longer than it normally does. One sec. Like, one of the interesting things that, um, in order to, to um, get around the issue of people knowing that you're coming in terms of like listing your opponent is uh, some of the duster guys have actually started creating shell corporations in order to mask their attacks um, someone will come on here and they'll be like they won't uh, they'll say oh okay I've never heard of this you know X corporation before I'll take this contract and then when they get in there it turns out it's uh, um, a bunch of uh, uh, people from a better known organization Oh, no, the, uh, uh, Merkor's asking a question about, um, 
the orbital bombardments, the way it works is you have to be part of um, faction warfare. That's the key. Um, there's a, I think it's, it used to be a 24 hour timer. I think now it's a 12 hour timer. Oh, looks like one of those popped. If anybody happened to be writing down the uh, contract list, you actually got a confirmed OB, potentially. Uh, and, and Null, since you're listening to this, if, if, if there was a way to make that more concrete, like the ringer system, because it's really, it's really buggy. We've been, ex we've, uh, uh, messed around with it doing scrims between, um, our corporation and our sister corporation. It just, yeah, it's, it, it, <laughs> it has, uh, it's interesting to say the least. No. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, and not only that, all of these systems are low sec. So you are a free target to anybody who shows up in the system. Yeah. Oh, there, there it is. I'm not going to refresh. But, ah. See, there we go. It's, you know, that's the other problem. If you're uh, mindlessly refreshing, you can uh, miss the place that you're um, trying to find. But you get the idea. you got to refresh it until the district pops up that you want. So, like, um... Now the other thing is, um, money doesn't flow directly from Eve to Dust yet. So, um, if you pay a Dust Corporation to take a district, it's just parked in their Eve wallet. But, um, the other thing about the orbital bombardments, um, there's a really great wiki. Um, I think it's still in the message of the day in Dust OB. But um, the way it works is you fly to the district satellite. So right here, you got VARD 8, District 7, and that's happening at 1638. Now the thing to know about when the, when um, uh, if you have a uh, potential OB, okay, the whole deal is so if it's at 1638, the Mercs spend 10 minutes in the war barge before a match starts. So before you're going to have at least 10 minutes from that 1638 time. So the soonest you're probably going to have be able to do an OB is probably not till about um, 15 minutes from that start time, if not longer. So um, to be on the safe side, you probably don't want to connect to the district right away. You probably want to wait at least a good 10 minutes. And um, now the other thing is uh, you can always connect or you can always get there sooner if you want to establish basically a defensive um, squad or fleet above the planet to ward off anybody coming in. Yeah, that's the idea, Foxhound. I think is is to um oh how powerful the uh, the idea is to eventually have a tax system and then um, as the economies equal 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 uh, I hate the word equal out as long as the uh, economies equal out then it's kind of to peel back the tax over time um, the uh, the orbital strikes they vary the um, the laser precision strike is the most powerful um, in terms of just direct damage um, its direct damage is like 26,000 um, which pretty much can kill any vehicle or um, uh, infantrymen on the ground uh, no uh, and it can even destroy um, almost any structure uh, dust side, um, but it's also got a smaller um, radius. Uh, the I, th I have the numbers. I'll have to go through and pull up the numbers from our test that we did on Sissy. Um, the uh, the next one up is the hybrid. Um, the hybrid it has a much larger radius, but its direct damage is a little bit lower. It still will completely destroy any infantry and probably uh, the majority of tanks. Um, then you have the EMP strike, which is the highest radius, but it does no damage except for taking off the shields. It's great for killing uh, um, shield tanks. So basically, you could take one of the, um, and it also peels off shields from friendlies and enemies. So one of the tactics on the ground that you can use with an EMP strike is if you have a force that's composed of all armor tanks, and then. Um, Basically, the other side's using all shield tanks. You could drop it right on top of your guys, kill the shield tanks, um, 
tanking ability and then wipe them out with the armor tanks. That's kind of the, the gist of that. Um, but the radius for the EMP strike is 150 meters, so it's huge. Um, with the way map sizes are right now, uh, you could stack um, among, like, so uh, the whole deal is you get one OB strike per squad. It, it's, um, okay, the way it works is you have to get war points. Each squad has to accumulate enough war points to equal into a, um, to get a OB request. They go through their menu and they pull it up and it says Starship Tactical and they select it. Um, they don't get to choose the ammo or anything, that's all each side. Yeah, yeah, Starship Tactical is literally the small turrets. I mean, and <laughs> if if this is small turrets, I, 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 yeah, it's going to be, I, I imagine that the uh, higher end uh, weapons is going to be uh, something quite spectacular. Um, but the, the way it works is the duster pulls up the Starship Tactical. Oh, you have to have a plan, uh, a ship connected to the district to have that uh, enabled. So if there's no nobody above connected to the district, then no dice. They're not going to be able to call in an orbital no matter what. Um, so what you do is you connect, they pull up their Starship Tactical, and they let it go, and on your screen, um, on your screen in the upper right corner, just as if you targeted a ship, um, a duster's face will appear with their name, the name of the person who called in the strike. What you want to do is you want to actually group your weapons, because if you, um, and you want to have a full rack of all the same type. Uh, the destroyers actually work pretty good in terms of cost efficiency. Um, you can use battle cruisers and you know other types of stuff, but in terms of you know getting in and not having to worry about cost, destroyers work pretty well. You know that I don't know. I don't know. It may be that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we did have some people on Sissy that were able to quick click fast enough to go through all of their turrets is kind of hilarious uh, to, to see them do it but uh yeah if you you're kind of guar you're guaranteed to have all your things hit yeah yeah it's like the, it was um I can't remember who, I can't remember who did it I think they used the uh, the function keys actually to pull it off they're shooting them all at once yeah and um the deal there's a couple tricks with the um the OBs uh, if someone's connected to the district, um, you, when the person's face pops up, you don't have to instantly click on it. I think it, stay, it, it stays parked there for between three and five minutes. We didn't get a chance to time it exactly, but it stays there for a while. In that time, the duster can actually redirect where the strike goes on the ground. Um, so he can park an OB in space, and then basically you can coordinate later on when to call in that strike. <laughs> I hope not. I, we would prefer it. We would prefer it if you uh, if you um, left the planet somewhat inhabitable, so we can continue to fight on them. Is that, does anybody any, have any uh, other specific questions? You know, you know, maybe that's how uh, shattered planets are created. Is if you uh, get a strong enough uh, uh, orbital engagement, you could just mess up the planet. Yeah, I heard about that. It was, um, I think it was Pandemic Legion, and um, uh, the goons. Apparently, actually, the um, the engagement was large enough that it actually affected the dust side servers, which was kind of kind of cool. Do you need a? Okay, I got another question from the Dust OB channel. Um, they're asking if um, do you need a minimum number of members? I'm all you need is a director. I'm fairly certain. Um, I've never been in a corp with a very small number count, so I can't be positive about that, Goran. Uh, 